Okay, a little lesson on pine shelterwood silviculture here. We're in a stand that uh, was regenerated with a uniform shelterwood cutting back in 2008, the fall, when we had a bumper seed crop. Um, we did three treatments here. Uh, well, actually the initial cutting was just a single treatment to about 70 square feet of basal area. And then we came back um, in, I think, three years and removed all or part of the overstory and some of the stand. We're looking now at a place where we, the overstory went completely off after age three, which is not something we would normally do, of course. We would keep this pine in the shade. However, we got, the stocking was so high here. Literally, uh, students had 150 trees on mill acre plots two years after that, this cutting. That's 150,000 trees per acre. And they all lived because 2009 was a really wet summer. We also did the thing where we dragged the, the tops around, we skidded everywhere, we knocked down all the understory fur, we did everything right here. So this is just an absolute carpet of pine regeneration on probably 25 or 30 acres in this shelter would stand. So here we are 13 years later, and of course this is totally a case of be careful what you wish for because the, the stand is now so thick that it's in serious danger of just falling over, collapsing from uh, stagnation, not stagnation, but uh, some height repression and inadequate height to diameter ratios. Keith uh, Kenody, our forest manager, manager, and Charlie Koch have been out here thinning. They did this a couple years ago. This was a, still a pretty narrow spacing, but I mean, you're going from 100,000 trees to an acre to maybe 1,500 or something like that, a little above six by six foot spacing. And that's really all it takes at this stand. These trees are now stable. They have not, none of the residual trees have fallen over and they're gonna be fine. If we look down here at the untreated stand, here we are in the untreated part of the stand still, thir again, 13 years old, and there are some larger trees in there, if you look around, but um, in general, I really worry because these trees are not developing a stable stem form. And it will, of course, just get worse and worse exponentially as the stand develops upward. So clearly we need to go in and thin these. This, I think, is a piece we're leaving just as a control because this is a teaching forest as well as a, an operational source of income for the, for the uh, school. So, and it's a great lesson. So it's... Um, uh, we need to do more of this thinning. He said he's done some in the other part of the block, uh, and that's good. And so I think the case where we have not removed any of the overstory, it's now grown back to about 120. You'll probably see that in the background. Um, that Some of that needs to be removed, or even all of it. But we, we would, of course, normally leave some reserve trees permanently. Light reserve. Uh, 100 square feet is way too much. So. Clearly we know how to regenerate pine, but when you do everything right and you have all that rainfall and that bumper seed crop, it, it sure works. And then you gotta be prepared to do some serious thinning. And this is expensive work because you're doing it early and there's so many stems, it's hard to see what you're even doing. Workers had a lot of difficulty with this. Okay. Okay, here we are on the walk out. We're looking at a piece that where the partial overwood is still on, maybe 30 square feet was left, now up to 40 probably very dense and we're right by the trail but you can see this is so dense that these trees are already collapsing on themselves most of them not everyone I mean there are you know you can find uh, potential crop trees in there but this is the danger of uh, tree instability when you get this super high density um, trees have already beyond recovery right uh, so if this happened in the whole span we would have lost tremendous nice cohort here